Hey guys, Lindsay here. And Marissa. It's Thursday, so it is Three Questions Thursday. And today we are going to talk about FDR. Who is FDR? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. How many terms did he serve? Two. He served four terms. <laughs> well, that's not fair, because I didn't know you could even do that. I don't think it's legal anymore. I'm not sure when they changed that, but... Uh, he definitely served four, four terms. terms. Well, he, he served up until his death. He died in office in 1945. Oh, okay. So, but he was elected. So I, that was the next question was when was his actual years of office? And it is 1933 to 1945, which is when he passed away. So we are talking about FDR because he is the fourth name that has been listed in the greatest speeches of all time ever, fictional or non-fictional. Yes, and so the Atlantic guest, Anthony Weiner, who is ashamed Congressman Anthony Weiner, I think this was before all his drama, although I don't I think don't so. I don't think so. I think it, because it he says, he was it says running former, for mayor. Yeah. former congressman. Yeah. Anyways, I think it was after his first problem, but before his second problem when he was running for mayor. And anyways, he said that FDR's For Freedom speech was the best speech ever given. Well, it's... it's The beginning of the speech is like... It's a state of the union. It's a, it was in, his, in the state of the union. First part of the speech goes on to say how never in history, ever in history, have we been in such danger as we are today. Mostly because he thinks the dictators are going to take over the world. And at no other point in time have dictators... Have, has, the have there been a threat to take over the entire world. Right. So then the, the second quarter of the speech is all about how businesses have to change. We have to start making planes and warcraft and guns and... We need to have, we need to sacrifice to get that done. Finally, this is literally the last page of the document, even though it's named Four Freedoms. The last page of the document is saying what the Four Freedoms are. Mm -hmm. Please. They are freedom of speech, freedom from want, freedom for religion or to worship. practice, to worship, and what's the last one? Freedom from... That's the very this last. is odd that we forget this because we've spent the whole first part of the document freedom from fear being scared freedom from fear but the fourth thing is freedom from fear and freedom from fear he specifically says means a worldwide reduction of armaments yep. to such a point that no nation will be able to position itself like like Germany to, has yeah, to position to itself. aggress against another nation what I found interesting is that um, for the first three or four pages you could basically say the same speech and insert terrorism in terrorists for now. dictators. Yep. <laughs> and, I mean, it's the same argument that we're giving, and it just reminds me of my dad, who's a big history buff, who always says, um, this has happened before and it will happen again. Nothing is new, and we're just repeating ourselves over and over again. Mm -hmm. What's <laughs> we've had two in a row, two weeks in a row, where speeches are given either right after war or right as war is starting mm -hmm. and it's funny that that tends to bring out in people like uh, that these speeches are this so good the because they're very because it's uplifting and well they're very patriotic rallying yeah very stuff. rallying tone the position of the speech in history is interesting i mean europe has basically gone to war and the you the, they've been at war for a couple of years yeah now. and the u.s is you know, we're trying to figure out, do we, you know, join up or do we just, you know, sit here and be like, well, it's not here. So we're just going to let those people over there deal with the stuff over there. Um, so this has been Three Questions Thursday, and we will see you guys next week. And our pumpkin bread is done. Yay. Peace out. <laughs>